Hey guys, welcome back to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel. And if you've been watching my videos, you know I recently put out a video about the spider ball python and the neurological defect that causes the head wobble. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the other morphs and some of the lethal combos mixing the two snakes together and some of the other combinations that can also cause a severe head wobble. All right, so this is my spider female ball python. And <laughs> this is the one that is highly debated, let me tell you. When I produced that video, I had, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of comments. I'm probably getting, I would say, 12 comments an hour around the clock about people that are for the spider and people that are really against the spider. Some people are kind of in the middle on the fence and then go either way. And it, it was really interesting. And as a matter of fact, there was one comment in particular that really got my attention and they actually quoted something. They didn't actually put the reference. But, but as far as my understanding, the spider, if you take a normal spider and you breed it to another snake, half the babies will come out spider. And, and if you have a, a female or a male that has no head wobble and you breed it to another snake, uh, they say there's like a 50-50 chance of getting that head wobble. And it started getting me thinking, well, what's really going on with the head wobble? And another person came in and said, hey, I've been breeding spiders for 20 years, and out of all my snakes, I've never had a head wobble, which I thought was really unusual, really unique. If it's really a 50-50 shot, then it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. And then other people say, you really can't line breed it. So, for example, if you took a snake without a head wobble, and you and you bred it versus even if it had a slight head wobble it doesn't really matter it really uh, it, it's not genetic down certain lines of spider as far as I understand and someone actually posted that comment where they quoted someone else and and it said something like every single spider actually has the defect and the defect is formed uh, when the egg develops in the egg and then I started thinking you know actually I have a, an egg incubator that's six feet tall and there's a huge temperature difference on the top of the incubator versus the bottom of the incubator and it's I would say it's several degrees from the top to the bottom as a matter of fact when you're incubating snake eggs over the two months the 60 days that it takes from to hatch I noticed all the eggs on the top are actually hatching several days earlier than the, the eggs on the bottom because it seems like the warmer temperatures speed up the incubation and they come out earlier and then I start thinking one thing leads to another I'm thinking hey I wonder if if the spider gene is actually sensitive to temperatures in the incubation where some people have really steady set incubation temperatures and they're not getting any wobbles in their spider and other people may be a little hotter or a little colder and they're actually seeing that that wobble and maybe that is really the effect <laughs> could you imagine if we could actually save the spider from the controversy if we can actually dial in the right incubation temperatures to actually fix the wobble in these snakes. I don't know if it's true. We'll definitely need more scientific study. And I think really the easiest way to prove it would be to throw a little temperature probe in the box of eggs when you're incubating the, the spider ball python eggs and kind of track the temperatures through the whole 60 days. Look at your, your spiders and see if they have wobbles and then figure out if, if they do or if they don't the, to change the temperature. Or maybe you guys, if, if you can just send me your incubation temperatures, tell me if you've had problems with the wobble or no wobble. And I think if we kind of compile the list of data, we can really figure out how to fix the spider ball python. Okay, so speaking of head wobble, everyone seems to be going after the spider for the head wobble. And let me tell you, there are at least six snakes, six ball python morphs that have head wobbles. It's not only the spider, but it is the champagne that can have some severe wobbles. I've actually seen some of the champagnes I've seen actually have wobbles so bad they're actually crawling on their backs in the pet stores in the displays. And, and I would have thought that people would have went after the champagnes before they went after spiders because from what I've seen, it seems like it's more of a problem. And the other thing is the Woma also has the head wobble, and then the Hidden Gene Woma has the head wobble. So those four snakes 
Spider, Champagne, Woma, and Hidden Gene Woma. Those all are single genes. And then there's also uh, two other morphs that have two copies of the gene, and that would be the Powerball, which is the Super Spot Nose. <laughs> the, the, kind of the slang is the Powerball. And then the Super Sable has two copies of the Sable gene. And what I'm going to do is, is, is I, can, I can kind of rattle off these names, and you really don't know what they look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this camera up on this tripod, bring you over to the website that actually has a picture of these ball pythons and you can see what they actually look like. Alright, so I am going to show you some wobblers, some ball pythons that have possible neurological issues that could result in uh, the head wobble or a stargazing effect. And this is actually a website called World of Ball Pythons, which is, uh, I would highly recommend going to this website if you want to find out more about ball pythons. It's www.worldofballpythons.com. And this is, this is pretty much the place where everyone lists their uh, their new combo so if you make a world's first you can go here and post it on this website and, and <laughs> kind of take credit for the world's first this one was actually first produced by nerd by Kevin McCurley's shop here and this is a Woma ball python and you can see it really looks a lot like a spider it's it's I would say it's kind of like a reduced spider it looks really similar and most people, uh, when they upload pictures, they, they upload multiple uh, different images. And you can see there's a lot of different, this one seems even more reduced. It's really more of a spider in, in just the WOMA. And you can see as you scroll through these, there's quite a bit of difference. This one almost kind of looks enchy like how it's re reduced more, a little more enchy than, uh, than spider. But this is just the straight Woma morph. It's, it's, uh, I've never actually worked with the Woma, um, but, but I know people that have. And then here is the Hidden Gene Woma, which is pretty similar. This one can also suffer from neurological issues and you can see they're all pretty much related to the spider they kind of have close to a spider pattern down the back I would say and here is the champagne the champagne is totally different than the spider let me tell you <laughs> and everything they say a lot of things you mix with champagne kind of get muddied uh, it, it kind of browns out everything with the champagne but I've seen some really incredible champagne combos what it does is a lot of times it'll totally reduce all the colors and uh, all the lines and patterns and sometimes you'll just have one solid color of I've seen like bright orange with no lines or patterns pretty amazing and and the champagne the interesting thing about the champagne is you can actually get uh, a champagne het pied and if it's if it's a hundred percent het pied and actually has pied splotches on it which I, I almost got into the champagne project because you can you could mix a champagne with 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 a pied and all the champagne het pies actually look like champagne pies because because of the white splotches and then an actual champagne pied is a totally white snake but I, I kind of didn't get into it because of the head wobble it's it's kind of the one big thing that really kind of turned me off on the champagne the other thing is is I scroll through these pictures and you can see there's really a lot of variability and just in the base morph between the different champagnes it's it's pretty incredible and then here this one looks like it's it's kind of a paradox this is not really typical of a champagne with these these markings here and I would say this is this is kind of more typical. This one actually has a lot of different a lot of different of uh, of pictures in here. You can see a lot of different variations of the champagne. And then the other one that suffers from head wobble. This is the Super Sable. So this is has two copies of the Sable gene. Really an impressive snake. This is <laughs> one of the one of the most striking dark snakes that I have seen. I'd actually consider getting a super sable if I can actually find one without the without the head wobble but this is a really really good looking snake and if you're wondering just what the sable looks like I actually pulled up a picture of just the sable and the sable looks pretty much like a really dark ball python I would say it's it's like a really almost like like a really dark normal which is interesting and then the powerball is the super spot nose and this is two copies of the spot nose gene and it's it's pretty interesting I've seen spot nose really blends well with clown the spot nose clown is just <laughs> it's just really incredible I've never quite seen anything like it it's 
it's pretty amazing. Okay, so those are the six main snakes and combos that actually have the, the neurological issue with the head wobble. And one thing you really want to avoid if you decide, okay, I want to get into the spider project and I want to kind of take my chance about uh, breeding some of these head wobblers, what you really want to avoid is breeding one of them to another. It looks, say, for example, if you bred a spider to a sable or a spider to a champagne, and let me tell you, if you had both of those genes in the same snake, you have a really high probability of a head wobble. And the other thing I want to talk to you about is the lethal combos. And there's actually two lethal combos that I know of. That is the Super Champagne. And I've actually seen a picture of a Super Champagne. And I'll show you that here on the laptop real quick. But, but they say that there's only ever been two produced. And they both died as hatchlings. And they're both completely white snakes. And the other one is the Super Spider. And let me tell you, with the Super Spider, there is a lot of controversy about if the Super Spider even actually exists. And there's several theories that some people have bred the, the spider to the spider, and they said they've never produced a spider where you breed it to like a normal and all the babies come out spider that would be the super spider with two copies of the gene and then other people say that uh, there, there's something maybe wrong with the genetics where somehow in the, on the, on the, in the genetics you actually can't have two copies of the gene it's impossible and other people say you actually can produce a super spider but it dies in the egg and, and some people have actually showed eggs where, where a snake will hatch out and it's completely white and they're like oh yeah, yeah that's the super spider it's completely white it died in the egg and I'm not really convinced that that's the case I actually had an albino that I crossed with my albino pied and several of the eggs actually developed and died in the egg and those were completely white snakes and this there's, there's no way you could get a completely white snake from an albino so I'm thinking Maybe they don't develop their color if they're deformed somehow in the egg and they don't develop. And I'm, I'm not convinced that the super spider is a completely white snake that dies in the shell. And, and some people said that, you know, they, they don't have any problems at all. That with, with bad eggs, they just breed spider to spider. And, and for some reason, they don't get the super spider. So let me set this up on a tripod again. I want to show you real quick what the super champagne looks like. That's a pretty interesting snake. Okay, so I was kind of actually floored when I saw a picture of a super champagne. I was like, what in the world's going on? This is supposed to be a lethal combo. And here is a super champagne on the world of ball pythons. And sure enough, I found out later that actually there was two of them produced and they both passed away. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on, what makes them not develop properly. But I thought it was pretty interesting that they actually had pictures of the super champagne. And here's a couple other uh, uh, defects that I want to quickly cover. Here's the desert ball python. If you haven't seen a desert, it's pretty impressive. And when they first came out, they were almost like the desert ghost. Re they make some really impressive combos. But the problem is, is the females are all sterile for some reason. And they pretty much gave up on the project. As a matter of fact, a lot of times when you try to breed the females and the females lay eggs, a lot of times the females will actually die. And if you, you can actually get into this project as long as you only breed a male to another ball python and never breed the females with the desert gene. And then there's a couple others. Here is the caramel albino. I'm actually shooting for some caramel albino scaleless <laughs> snakes eventually. And, and the, the caramel albino is one of the first genes on the scene. And it's, it's really impressive. I think they're really bright when they're small. And they kind of turn to this really gorgeous, deeper color when they get older. But the problem with the caramel albino, some people say that in, in certain cases, they have a lot of kinking. Some people People say that it's, it's kind of like with the spider. They've been breeding it for years. Some people never have, have, have kinks in the spine. And some of them are all kinked up where you have these genetic anomalies, these deformities in the spine. It'll just come out all kind of crippled. It's, 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 I've seen some really kinked snakes. And, and personally, I'm not sure if it's only with the caramel albina. I've seen it with, with lessers and some of the other snakes too, some ultramels. And, and I'm pretty sure that the kinks are are kind of widespread across all ball pythons. It's just kind of a, a genetic anomaly. It's, it, they say it's more prevalent in the caramel albino. 
and let's see what else we have here. Here is the Super Cinnamon, and <laughs> the Super Cinnamon makes some really cool combos. Uh, I think the the Panda Pied, uh, you can make the 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 Panda Pied, which is a really impressive snake with the Super Cinnamon. The problem with the Super Cinnamon is that it tends to have a duck bill and it does, you can't really see on this but what it does is, is it flattens the nose and then it spreads out the mouth gives it a duck bill they they feed perfectly fine they just look a little bit different <laughs> and let's see what else we have here this is a I, I believe this is a super lesser so you can see the super lesser actually has uh, kind of bug eyes as bigger than normal eyes and I actually have a lesser pied with smaller than normal eyes and <laughs> I want to show you that compared to this one this is you know if you breed uh, the super lessers uh, they say sometimes the blue-eyed leucistic just with the lesser uh, kind of results in the the bigger eyes and I have a lesser bamboo doesn't have the bug eyes but I do have the lesser pied which has the smaller eyes and let me show you that snake all right, so I want to show you these two white snakes together. This is actually my spider pied white wedding. Uh, you can see her head, and she has pretty normal eyes. And this is my lesser pied, and you can definitely tell on her eyes. Look at how tiny her eyes, her eyes are. She's a blue-eyed leucistic, so she has blue eyes, but look at how tiny they are. And my spider pie has black eyes. You can well, you can definitely tell it's it's a different eyes. It's it's completely different. She almost looks like she has almost bigger than normal eyes on the spider pie. But I thought it was really interesting that you could definitely instantly tell the lesser pied by the smaller sunken in eyes. All right, so here is another genetic anomaly that I experienced this year. It was kind of weird. I had this clutch of eggs. I mixed my albino pied with my albino het pied female, and these I had three hatchlings that came out incredibly small. And believe it or not, when this was when this hatchling first came out, she was eating pinky mice. It was incredible. She was incredibly small. She came out as thin as a pencil. I couldn't even believe it. And and believe it or not, she's already had, I would say, probably 20 meals. And look at how small she is. She's about as big as the hatchlings coming out of the egg. And, and I didn't think these were going to make it. One of them actually had a hard belly. And she actually survived, and, she, and these are all, all three of them now, they're on uh, live crawler mice. I mean, that's basically what you'd feed a brand new hatchling right out of the egg. And these guys have been out for months, and <laughs> some of them I had to assist feed like four or five times. And so, sometimes they just would not take the assist fed rodents, and I tried and tried and tried, and finally I got them to go. But th I thought that was a weird genetic anomaly just for that one clutch. I don't know if it's specific to albinos, but for some reason they came out extremely small. So here is one more genetic anomaly that I have in my collection, and this is my Coral Glow male. I'm actually pairing them up with my Lemon Blast female, hoping to get some some <laughs> coral glow pinstripes is what I'm actually shooting for. Those are really cool snakes. But the interesting thing about the coral glow is <laughs> this guy's running away. That it actually, this is actually what we call a male maker. And a male maker actually produces all male offspring. So every single coral glow I produced this year as a hatchling were all males. <laughs> every single one. I didn't get one female. I think I produced like 10 of them. And they also have female makers. And then they have female coral glows that will actually produce a 50-50 ratio of males and females. But I thought it was interesting that the coral glow is actually linked to the gender of the offspring. Okay, so that wraps up my discussion of genetic defects and lethal combos in ball pythons. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.